Yeah, I, I've lived in many ways a very fortunate life, um, but the greatest fortune that I've ever received in my life was this um, powerful and authentic education in the nature of mind. Because mind is at the basis of whatever I'm doing, wherever I am, whoever I'm with, whatever I'm thinking about, whatever I'm feeling, there is a basic intelligence that is the essence and the source of all of that thinking, feeling, sensing, all of that experience. And so the more deeply and precisely I get to know the nature of that intelligence and its relationship to all of the experience, then um, the easier life becomes and the more clear I can be about how I want to live my life. I can make um, easier decisions. I can relate to people in a much more natural, authentic and, and powerful way. And that's the power of this training, is to discover that these qualities, this ability to relate with um, a powerful openness, regardless of circumstance, is really what I've discovered in this training. Um, it has to start with each of us identifying that intelligence for ourselves. Um, and in this training we call it open intelligence. And if you just stop thinking for a moment, just relax the need to describe anything that's going on for you and recognize that there's something that's experiencing everything that's going on. There's something that's looking through your eyes, hearing these words, um, feeling yourself sat on the chair, experiencing the hot or the cold, depending on where you are, and that the descriptions, the, the data, are always changing. They're just flowing on by, effortlessly changing from one to another, one thought flowing into another, one feeling appearing and then um, self-releasing naturally and yet all the while there is a constant throughout that experience and that is this intelligence, that is this capacity to know and if you just stop thinking again for a moment that same intelligence is still there, it hasn't gone anywhere even though the thoughts have changed and you're thinking something else or what you're perceiving is different from what it was a moment ago and so we really become confident in our own experience as to this fundamental um, nature of reality. So there is an open intelligence that's naturally present and within this intelligence all our experience is streaming, just flowing on by. And so with a simple suggestion that for short moments repeated many times of just allowing that stream of experience to be as it is, what we do is we give ourselves, um, it's like giving ourselves space to recognize the actual nature of our experience, to recognize that there is this open intelligence that is the source, the essence and the basis of everything that we're experiencing. And then the next question is, well, why is that important? And it's important because without that recognition, without knowing the nature of reality, the nature of our mind, and recognizing that whatever we're experiencing is inseparable and is the dynamic energy of that mind or of that intelligence, there's no way to really make sense of or understand what's going on. Um, because what we're trying to do is make sense of, um, or trying to make decisions, you could say, based on appearances and experiences that are fleeting and always changing. And whilst we're looking for those fleeting and always changing experiences to give us some kind of um, capacity to be in life, to give us a stable basis for, kn for knowing how we should live our lives and um, who we should spend our time with, for example. There can't be any possibility of any stability based on things that are always changing. It just doesn't make any sense. But when we identify for ourselves in our own experience, through this practice of short moments, um, what is always on, what is never changing, and what is always the basis of all of our experience, then we discover what is stable. And in these short moments we gain confidence in seeing what difference it makes to us in a practical way when we identify this open intelligence and then begin to rely on it, rather than only relying on the descriptions, on the data, for our basis for knowing how to act in the world and what decisions to make and how to relate and that kind of thing. So it's very simple, very profound and very practical. And 
each short moment builds this assurance, it builds this confidence in seeing for ourselves what difference it makes when we switch our attention from only focusing in on the descriptions, which are always changing, to recognizing just in one moment with the current moment perception that it is inseparable from open intelligence in the same way that the breeze is inseparable from the air or that the color blue is inseparable from the sky. And the difference it made to me was that suddenly everything made sense. There was an immediate ability to access a clarity and a stability that meant that I could see everything much more clearly than ever before. Um, so in a practical way, um, by recognizing, I think a really challenging topic is relating with other people, it certainly was for me. Um, and part of relating with other people is having ideas of comparison. And, um, and that, that comparison could be in lots of ways. It could be um, physical comparison, it could be mental comparison, could be comparison with um, ideas of how um, clever I thought someone was. Um, and that could go either way, thinking that I'm much smarter than someone or thinking that I'm really stupid compared with someone. Um, it could be to do with how cool someone appears, thinking that someone's really cool or just thinking that they're a complete idiot. Um, and it's just this... To recognize that all of those thoughts, all of those comparisons, whether they're positive or negative, whether we feel inferior or superior, are also just this inseparable um, dynamic display of open intelligence. So none of them can be found to have an independent nature. And when I relax the descriptions around either feeling inferior or superior, and I allow them to flow on by, there is a different perspective on those thoughts and emotions. Um, and what I find is that when I base my relating either on feeling inferior or superior, there is, it's impossible to relate with an openness. It's impossible to relate with an open heart and an open mind because I'm relating based on an idea rather than the open intelligence that is the basis of the idea. And um, in either extreme there is a closing down of relating. So if I think I'm much smarter than you, then immediately there's a closing down in my capacity to really relate to you and to listen to you openly, because I know best. If I believe that I'm inferior to you, then there is a similar closing down in relating, because I think that my capacity is much less than yours, that I'm limited, that I'm not as good as you, and the focus of the relating will be those thoughts and feelings rather than the open intelligence that is the basis of those thoughts and feelings. So what I do when those thoughts and feelings come up is to take a short moment of allowing them to be as they are, just allowing them to flow on by, rather than getting into the descriptions that can just proliferate and flower in an instant if I begin to think about those thoughts. So either way, so um, if I think, oh look at that person over there, they're, you know, they're, they're just much more attractive and beautiful than I am. And immediately I can begin to think, ah, oh, but you know, if only I was as handsome or as beautiful as they are, then, you know, life would be wonderful and I'd be really happy and, God, that's the reason why I'm not happy, you know, if only I could lose a few, few kilos and I'd be even happier and, ah, oh, so I need to go down the beach and go for a run and why didn't I do that this morning, that's why I'm a loser and nobody likes me and you know that all happens in an instant, in, 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 a, in a second we're off in this world of descriptions and so to cut that flow of emphasis on data and that emphasis on data is just, can be called reification so reification means trying to give a thought, emotion or sensation an independent nature and one of the ways that we do that is by describing it. And the, the example I just gave there is an example of reification. I have one thought. Look at that person over there. Aren't they beautiful? And then the, all the thoughts that follow would be the reification, would be the emphasis on the descriptions about the thought, the thinking about the thinking. 
or the feelings about the feeling. And so we have an option actually that we can just cut that description just for a short moment and return to open intelligence and recognize that the basis of that thought, like all thoughts, like all feelings, like all experiences, is the same open intelligence that we identified for ourselves when we stopped thinking. And you can do it again, just stop thinking for a moment. And there's that intelligence. It's still there. It hasn't gone anywhere. All the way, all the time I've been talking and you've been thinking about whatever you've been thinking and that same intelligence was always the basis of all of those thoughts and experiences too. So each time that we check in, we see for ourselves that the basis of whatever the current moment perception is, whatever we label or describe it as, is the same open intelligence every single time. And then we discover that we have a choice in how we use that intelligence, whether we use it to describe what our descriptions are of our descriptions, which is kind of sounds kind of silly and pointless, and the result of that is, I could see for my in my experience, was an inability to relate with openness, um, both to myself and to other people, or we can return to open intelligence, the basis of our experience, and to discover not only our capacity to relate with openness and warmth is innate, but also to discover our capacity of innate discernment. We have brilliant minds, incredibly creative. Everything that you're experiencing now is pouring forth from your intelligence. All of the reality that you're experiencing is based on your capacity to describe what's going on. But that is innate and it's spontaneous. It doesn't need further comment. You actually see everything as it is already. So the habit of then reifying or describing further what's going on is actually just something we've learned and isn't really very helpful. So to see that for ourselves is the most incredible shift in the way that we use our intelligence. We see that our intelligence is naturally open naturally clear and has naturally this skillful discernment. All we need to do is allow that innate natural capacity to become obvious and we do that by allowing the flow of data that your experience to be as it is and just to flow on by without the need to correct or comment on it in any way. It's completely the opposite from what I'd learned I needed to do with my intelligence, with my time and my energy. I'd learned I needed to think about everything analyze everything. So because it's so different, often this practice of short moments of testing out what happens when I try this new approach is the way that we gain confidence in seeing the power and the potency and the capacity for skillful discernment as being innate. So I have a choice. I can choose how I want to live my life and Although that might seem obvious, in many ways I didn't see that I had a choice. Or I at least wasn't aware of the assumptions that I had adopted about who I was, how I needed to live my life, and the ways that those basically controlled me. So even though I thought I was choosing things, it was choice from complete confusion not knowing the nature of reality, not knowing the nature of my mind, not understanding the fundamental nature of everything that I was experiencing, and then trying to do my best to live my life. And um, it, was, it was a struggle. It did seem like a struggle. Life seemed like something I had to endure, and there were points of happiness and enjoyment and bliss, of course, but because those were fleeting appearances and they never lasted, it was a struggle to try and recreate those. And so through this simple practice and then through the rest of the support that's on offer here, I've become completely comfortable with my own experience, with this flow of experience, by seeing for short moments what happens when I allow it to be as it is. And um, going back to your question, it's incredible now to 
particularly here on the beach. I mean, there are some really beautiful people, you know, incredible people, beautiful in all ways. And now the thought can come up, wow, look at them, they're beautiful. <laughs> and that's it. It's amazing. I can just acknowledge and appreciate the beauty of people in all ways. It doesn't have to be referred back to me and my inferiority in any way. So that comparison that was either positive or negative can actually be relaxed. And all that's left then is the appreciation of somebody else's beauty or capacity or um, capability or skillfulness or creativity rather than then having to reference it back to me and compare it to, well, how does that compare to my ability or my beauty or my prowess or my skill? That habit is just something I've learned. And so if I've learned it, then I can unlearn it. But it has to be recognized that this is something that we've learned. I've learned to use my mind in this one way, and the Balance View training teaches us that we can use our mind in a different way now. And the results are that life becomes easier, the struggle with my data, with my experience, relaxes and relaxes and opens up and opens up. And life becomes actually what it's always been, an effortless flow where all of the data that I experience are the beneficial potency of open intelligence. The data are the capacity for skillful discernment once I recognize them as being inseparable from open intelligence. I can choose how I want to live my life, who I want to spend my time with, what I want to spend my time doing, and the capacity and the clarity in seeing exactly what that is and that there is nothing that can stop me from doing that apart from emphasis on data or reification and that here all I'll find is the empowerment to see I can choose. I can choose, even if it's just in this moment, what am I going to choose? Collapsing into descriptions about what's going on or resting naturally as open intelligence and seeing in each moment what my choice is, what my decision is. Upgrading my intelligence each moment I do that to see that I really can decide for myself how I want to live my life. The thoughts, the ideas, the concepts I had about how things had to be, about this identity that I needed to create and uphold and convince other people as to this is who I am, they're just ideas, they're just concepts. And recognizing that none of them have this independent nature gives me a really clear perspective on them. And then I can include them in my skillful discernment and decide how I do want to live. It's so beautiful. It makes life really, really beautiful. The beauty in life that I always knew was there and had glimpses of and kind of was sure was the basis but was was somehow missed. And it was missed because of my emphasis on my thoughts, emotions and sensations. So busy with what I thought was going on, I forgot to recognize the incredible nature of reality as it actually is. And so to have that as a lived experience, not just as a, a, a fleeting experience or a nice idea, but to bring that into everyday lived experience, that is the power and for me the uniqueness of this training given a simple support structure and a practice that I could take into everyday life. Didn't matter where I was. Goa, London, Oxford Street, on the mountains, on the beach, on my own with lots of people. Didn't make any difference. All those data flowing on by, open intelligence, wide open, clear and unaffected. 